In the first video where I was introducing the foundations of nonviolent communication using the Sierra Hearts No Fault Zone, I shared the first stages of somatic dialogue for me was checking in to identify one's feelings and naming their needs. When I check in to identify what I'm feeling and what my needs are, it gives me the spaciousness to be willing to listen to what your feelings and needs are in a dialogue with you. When I listen to my feelings and needs, it's self-empathy. So I'm going inward and I'm identifying the feeling and I'm marrying it to the stimulus for that feeling, which is a universal need. So in that first video, some of the uh, feelings I came up with were tired, thrilled, and inspired. And I married them to what needs of mine were being met. And that was for creativity, for contribution, and for meaning and purpose. When I can identify those feelings and needs, I'm more apt to be able to look at the observation of what stimulated my met or my unmet need. And so in that stage, what I'm doing is listening to my thoughts about me and I'm listening to thoughts about you. I've been preconditioned to have a thinking pattern like most of us in terms of what is in our cultural conditioning. And in our cultural conditioning, we have been trained to blame others, to shame them with a right and wrong thinking. So there's punishment and reward. And we, we have expectations of people without telling them what our expectations are. So it is actually a thinking process of failure and scarcity. People can't meet our needs when we aren't able to express them in a way that people want to contribute to our needs. So to come out of that way of thinking, I'm going to want to shift the energy into calm, calmness. And the kind of energy that I might be shifting from is my anger. So the anger feelings of frustration, irritation, uh, annoyance, rage even, you know, just being mad, shifting it and... Uh, shifting the way I want to get my needs met through demands, um, judging others. Moral judgments are when we label others as lacking or blaming others for doing something to us. The other aspect that's not commonly focused on is constant complaining about your situation or my life situation. These are all conditional behaviors that were in our environment that we learn and it became the way that we process information. However, there's other ways to process information and that's why I enjoy nonviolent communication so much is Dr. Marshall Rosenberg created a pattern to communicate that creates that pause to check in and to transition from habitual ways of thinking and responding into more of a conscious way of understanding with clarity what is alive in all of us. So once I identify what I'm feeling and need, needing and I'm able to put the story my story about you or myself into more of a factual context, which we call an observation, then I can have a dialogue where I focus on the facts and then I can share what I'm feeling and what I'm needing. 
and I might share that using the five senses. So if I'm stimulated into an emotion, I would start off sharing what that emotion is. If I've heard something, I would say, when I hear, if I'm thinking about something and it's my opinion, my belief, my perspective, or my interpretation, that's how I would start off. I would not want to come across as an authority on a topic that I really don't have any integrated experience with. So I would say it's my belief system, or I think, or it's my perspective, or I interpret it this way. That gives the listener space from not being told something, so not having power over. If I believe something, it doesn't make it an authority. It doesn't make it right. And so when I'm speaking to someone, I prefer not to come across as an authority due to the fact that they're going to not be as open to listen to what I have to say. They're going to be stimulated before I even get to the nugget that I want to share. They'll be hung up on me being an authority on something and thinking that I know everything. So how I tell my story is relevant to how people hear me. So after I tell my story, I would follow it up with a request. The request would be concrete and it would be doable and it would be an action request. So it wouldn't be some lame request with the hope that somebody may contribute it to it at some point in the future. It would be a concrete request. For example, if I had a family member and we had come to an agreement of them taking out the garbage, I would want to express the date and the time to have the garbage taken out. That way, on the date and the time, if that person, that family member, is unable to take the garbage out, it would no longer be about the garbage not being taken out. So there would be no ranting, no raving about how this person has something wrong with them because they didn't take the garbage out. It would be a conversation around what's important, taking the conversation a bit deeper, and so the values would be more intimate. It would be about respect, contribution, keeping agreements, uh, consideration. If the garbage was taken out, then it would be about appreciation and recognition and the value I have for that family member contributing to my well-being. So it would be a concrete doable request so that there can be a simple follow-up. And part of the simple follow-up actually brings that family member and I closer into a connection versus the disconnection of blaming them and shaming them for not doing something that they agreed.